Welcome to the Revit tutorial for beginners. Today's topic is about all the settings you need to know before you start modeling. So to start a new project, click New. After clicking, a template window will appear. Click on the template file. From the template file options, select the default metric. Select Project, click OK. After clicking, a new project setup will open. When you first install Revit 2020, after opening the software, it may show the default family template file invalid. How to solve this issue is already explained in my previous video. A link is given below. After opening the project, type UN. After typing UN, the unit settings window will appear. Click on the discipline option. From here, you can select a common unit setting. Structural unit settings. HVAC unit settings, electrical unit settings, piping unit settings, and energy unit settings. Let's select the common settings. Next, click on the length format. In the unit option, you can select different types of units. Let's select feet and fractional inches. Click OK. Again, click OK. Click on the model line. Let's click anywhere and slowly drag the mouse. Here, you can see, all the units are now converted into feet and inches. Press Escape. Again, type UN. Click on the length format. Click on Units. Let's select millimeters. Click OK. Again, click OK. Let's click anywhere and slowly drag the mouse. Here, you can see, all the units are now converted into millimeters. Press Escape. Again, type UN. Click on Area Format. Click on Units. From here, you can select your required units. Click on Rounding. From here, you can select your rounding digit. Click on the unit symbol. Here you can select your unit symbol, or you can keep it none. Click OK. Next, click on Volume Format. Click on Units. From here, you can select your volume units. Click on Rounding. From here, you can select your rounding digit. Click OK. Next, click on Angle Format. Click on Units. From here, you can select your angle units. Click OK. Next, click on the slope format. Click on Units. From here, you can select your slope units. Click OK. Next, click on Currency Format. Here you can see that, for the time being, no currency units are available. Click OK. Next, click on Mass Density. Click on Units. From here, you can select your Mass Density units. Click OK. Next, click on Time. Click on Units. From here, you can select your required units. Click OK. Next, click on Speed. Click on Units. From here, you can select your speed units. Click OK. Again, click OK. The next option is Elevation. Here you can see all the circular marking at different elevations. Press Escape. Click on Visibility and Graphics. Let's scroll down until you're getting the Site option. Click on the Site. Put a tick on the project base point. Click Apply. Click OK. Now you can see that the project base point symbol is visible. You can drag this base point wherever you want. Also, you can manually edit the coordinates. Let's again select the project base point and drag it. Next, zoom in on the elevation points. Click on the center of the circle. After clicking, you can see a four side checkbox appear. Put a tick on the checkbox. You can see that after putting a tick on a checkbox, that portion is converted into a dark black color. This means that site elevation is activated. So you can activate all site elevations at a single point. You can also see the location of the elevation point by dragging it. Let's again drag it. Let's untick all three elevations. After removing the tick, it will show a warning message. Click OK. Let's go step by step and untick all the elevations. Click on the empty space. Next is how to create a grid line in Revit. To create a grid line, click on the Architecture tab. Click on the grid. Next, click on the drawing area and drag it. To finish the drawing, click again. To draw multiple grid lines, you can click one by one and draw by the measurement. If you want to extend the grid line, select the grid line. Click on the small circular marking on the grid line and drag it. If you want to extend only one line, click on the lock symbol. Click on the small circular marking on the grid line and drag it. You can see only one line is now extended. If you want to change the location of the numbering of the grid line, select the grid line. Click on the break line of the grid. After clicking it, it will bend. Now you can drag it wherever you want. Let's undo all these steps by pressing Ctrl Z multiple times. 
Next, if you want to draw the grid line in the opposite direction, just select the grid and repeat the same process. The next option is how to create levels. Here you can see in the four plan options that level 1 and level 2 are marked. To create more levels, double-click any of the elevations. Here you can see that the two levels are marked. To create new levels, click on Level. Click on the empty area where you want to start your level line and drag it. To end this level line, click wherever you want. After drawing, if you want to adjust a level, click on the number showing in the label box. Modify the height of the level line as you require. Press Enter. To end this level drawing and to continue the other level markings. Press Escape. If you want to draw more levels, continue the same process. During starting the level line, if you want to add level line by reference distance, just type the numbers before clicking. Press Enter. Click on the area and drag it. Click to end the drawing. Press Escape. Here you can see the levels are named by 1, 2, 3 and 4. Next, if you want to rename your levels, double click on the level name. Rename the level. Press Enter. After pressing Enter, it will show you a confirmation message to rename the corresponding views. Click Yes. To rename the second level, double-click on the level name. Type the new name. Press Enter. After pressing Enter, again it will show you one confirmation message to rename the corresponding views. To top this annoying message, put a tick on Do not show me this message again. Click Yes. Next, in a similar process, you can rename all your levels. Press Escape. Next, double-click on the site floor plan. Click on the arrow below the wall. Click on Wall Architectural. Click on the basic wall in the properties panel. Let's scroll up and select one sample wall. Click on the wall. After clicking, you can see at the top of the property panel that an option bar has appeared. These options will give you control over levels and drawing types. In the first option, you can select depth or height. Let's select a height. After selecting height, next click on unconnected. Here, you can see all the labels you marked previously are available. With these options, you can limit the height of your walls or any 3D component. If you select unconnected, then you can manually enter the value of your 3D component height. Let's select the third floor. The next option is the location line. Click on the location line. Here you can see, to draw a 3D wall there are different types of options available. Like wall centerline, core centerline, finish face exterior, finish face interior, core face exterior, core face interior. Let's select the finish face exterior. The next option is chaining. If you put a tick on the chain, your drawing will be continuous. The next option is called offset. If you enter the value, then the drawing will have an offset value. The next option is radius. This option will enable radius in continuous drawing. The next option is joint status. This option will enable or disable the joining of drawings. Let's draw a wall. First, click on the grid line and drag the mouse. Here, you can see the wall is drawing one side of the grid line. If you want to change the side of the wall, press space on the keyboard. To end the drawing, click on the other side of the grid line. Press Escape. Next, select the wall center line. Click on the grid line and drag the mouse cursor to the other end to complete the drawing. Here, you can see the drawing is now drawn along the central line. To see these drawings in 3D, click on the home symbol at the top. After clicking the home symbol, the 3D view option will be generated in the project browser panel. Next is the view control bar. From here, you can control all your view related settings. First click on the detail level. Here you can see three types of detail leveling available. Coarse detailing, medium detailing, and fine detailing. The next option is visual style. With these options, you can change your visual style settings. For example, click on the wireframe. Here you can see the model is changed into a wireframe. Next, click on the hidden line. This option will change the drawing to a wireframe with a hidden line. Next, click on shaded. This option will change your drawings to a shaded visual style. Next, click on realistic. This option will show the realistic material color applied to the model. Next, click on rate race. This option will analyze your model with light reflection. You can see that after clicking rate tracing analysis started. This may take some time to generate the image. If you want to cancel this process, click on the close button. Let's go back to realistic view. To rotate the model, press shift and press the mouse wheel combined and move the mouse to rotate the model. So these are the general settings you need to know before you start modeling.
like, subscribe, share, and press the bell icon for more interesting topics.